And we've been identified as a technology to help with the resurgence of sports because of the value that we provide and allowing those fans to feel comfortable in this global pandemic that we're in. Um, our product transformed from a fan experience side of the world to an operations health and safety side moving forward. So we're in this transition of from a nice to have solution to a need to have solution. Welcome uh, Zach to the show, uh, Pack Talks with VJCV. Zach is uh, on the show for the second time. Uh, we spoke uh, almost uh, six, seven months back when uh, things were quite different. Uh, the market was different. We didn't have a COVID uh, and uh, now he's back. So uh, let's hear it from uh, Zach. Thank you, Zach, for joining. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to talk to you again. Uh, for the viewers, uh, Zachary Klima, he's a founder and CEO of uh, Wait Time, a very uh, innovative and interesting uh, solution. I would not say software, it's a solution. So, uh, Zach, if you can just uh, give a gist of uh, what the Wait Time is all about and how it uh, started. Up. Yeah, so we've developed the first in the world artificial intelligence building system technology that's able to track and record the movement analysis of people in real time in large sports venues around the world. So we started in sports, but we're quickly going to mass transit, retail, and a number of other areas. So the way wait time works is we mount power over Ethernet cameras, just any camera in the world, above every line inside the stadium. Now, uh, basically what it does is it takes screenshots 10 times per second from above the line, and our patented artificial intelligence tracks anonymously, of course, so there's no object recognition. Uh, it tracks the speed of direction of each person, tracks the direction of movement of each person, and it does all this 10 times per second. So we know um, with uh, four different algorithms that we have, uh, we know a number of different things using a, a mix and match of those algorithms. So uh, with a couple of them, we know how many people are in line at any point in time. Uh, and others, we know the percentage of occupancy of a given area in real time as well. So as an operator, you're able to dial in and see what your problems are, set threshold triggers of occupancy and uh, areas across your concourse in real time. And But also the fan has access to this information as well. So when a fan walks out of their seat, it, there's always that decision-making location. Do I go right or do I go left? So at that point in time, what we have is a very large 75-inch screen that we mount outside of every single vomitory, and it shows you concessions to the right, concessions to the left, um, restrooms to the right and to the left, and what the wait times are in that green, yellow, red spectrum bar analysis. So we've developed a first-in-the-world interior and exterior environment traffic system for people in real time. So it's both the fan side and the operation side. When I was uh, looking at uh, wait time and the article that we covered, uh, say, six months back on wait time, uh, the whole thought process of uh, how you started wait time uh, in terms of you uh, missing an uh, important uh, section of the game. And uh, so you wanted to come back with a solution wherein people don't wait and lose time. And Correct. It's, uh, it's an amazing thing to see that now the same uh, solution comes back uh, as a solution which can actually help people to wait and see where is less crowd and then make their movement to that side. So, uh, in a way, wait time which was uh, like a solution to manage the, uh, reduce the waiting time. Now, uh, it's nice to see that you have uh, pivoted and uh, turned it around and helping people to manage uh, the crowd and uh, make them wait and then get into the stadium. That's right. Yeah. So we started off as a fan experience because I, as a fan, um, you know, missed the game winning goal, as you said. So I thought it as a fan would have been great, um, which of course it is. But in this global pandemic that we're in, um, our product transformed from a fan experience side of the world to an operations health and safety side moving forward. So 
we're in this transition of uh, um, from a nice to have solution to a need to have solution. So, um, you know, it's a very good timing for knowing what crowds are doing inside the venue, outside the venue. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a technology that helps with that. Before we come back to the sports and we talk about sports arenas and how sports will be impacted because of the pandemic and how wait time can actually be a part of the solution. Um, can you uh, talk about how uh, uh, wait time has uh, expanded or enhanced this solution so that now even the retail industries uh, like a supermarket or a shopping mall can actually use wait time and make sure that there is a proper crowd management happening there? Yeah, so we've done a, a couple of different things with our solution. We added on to the first big one is um, we built another algorithm. So the algorithm that we built that is applicable in not just sports, but uh, grocery stores and shopping centers is our entry and exit software. So what we do is we mount a camera. What it does is it will monitor and count the people going in and the people going out. Uh, at the same time. And if you have multiple doors, we can link those doors together. So you always know what the real time occupancy of that area is. So that's the biggest addition that we've done, um, which, you know, for uh, if you're talking about sports, it's for, you know, VIP clubs, for suites, for all kinds of different things. But we also for um, for grocery stores, it's a big one because they have to monitor how many people go inside. So it's a way for them to manage occupancy auditing when it comes to our solution. Great. So uh, to uh, take you a little bit more in detail about this particular thing that you spoke about retail, uh, is there a possibility wherein uh, your uh, algorithm, once it calculates the number of people going in, and uh, every store will have a set amount of people who can be in, inside the store at a particular point in time. So is there a way wherein it connects to the door and automatically the door gets locked and next mm -hmm. set of people cannot get in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have an API that uh, they can tie into whatever system they have. So if it hits a certain number of people inside the store, we can then lock the door. Um, once people leave and they, you know, it can unlock the door, there's all different kinds of things that we can do to automate, um, you know, uh, building automation, basically, uh, for smart controls, for locks, and uh, things like that that are more operational focused. So, yes, the answer is yes. Awesome. The uh, usability of uh, wait time currently, it will not be restricted to even the uh, small grocery stores. It can even go to a level in which uh, I have an office space and in, in my office space in the meeting room I have I can have only five people at a time to maintain the social distancing then uh, once five people are inside my office door or, or the meeting room automatically closes and it will not open un until unless someone walks out of the room correct do that right correct yep it's all just uh, using our data feed from that specific location that we're monitoring and that can control anything so it could be it's always those if then statements so um yeah and that's all powered by an api which is fed by wait time now uh, taking you back to say three months in march when the whole thing happened the covid hit and uh, people didn't know what to do and everything around sports was uh, getting into a closure and you had all always focused on sports and your solution was around sports um, so how did you take it and how did how much time it took for you to turn it around and make it a, a different uh, solution? So we were thinking about other applications before COVID hit, but once COVID hit, that definitely um, sped up <laughs> everything. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we were thinking about it beforehand, but when it actually happened, um, it really just um, expedited that process. Has any any of the uh, government bodies uh, started talking to you in terms of using your uh, product uh, somewhere? So actually, the first meeting we had with the government body was in Australia. Wow. Um, yeah. So the govern the governing body over there, which was introduced to us by a, a good friend of mine who is a consultant, a very well known venue consultant out of Australia. 
Mm -hmm. um, he introduced us to the governing body that they make um, investment for sport. So um, when we did that, it was, um, you know, it was, it was fantastic because all of the governing body, they, they don't know what to do as well. You know, they, they said, hey, we're figuring things out. This is a congealing process of everything. So um, when we showed them what we were doing, we, we hopefully, and it, you know, I think it turned out that way, we helped them to gain more clarity on, on what's out there to really help out in a positive way. Awesome. Uh, so for uh, people who, are, uh, who don't know in terms of how wait time reached uh, Australia, so wait time is the one which powers uh, Sydney Cricket Ground and Melbourne Cricket Ground in terms of managing uh, the uh, crowd there. Uh, so for, that's for the cricket fans. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So now com coming to sports, uh, the sports has uh, changed drastically uh, once the COVID thing hit. And uh, now all the uh, leagues in US and in across, across the globe, uh, everyone is thinking about uh, doing the matches uh, today with a closed stadium with no fans. Uh, so uh, what is your take on this? Yeah, well, I think it has to be in stages, right? So a lot of sports are in the planning stages for when sports do open up in terms of all fans are allowed to come back in. All fans are not going to come back in because they don't feel comfortable. So what wait time had, we've been identified as a technology to help with the resurgence of sports because of the value that we provide and allowing those fans to feel comfortable to be inside the stadium. So we see it in two stages where, you know, we'll be inside the stadiums when there'll be no fans inside there. But what we're doing is we're preparing for the inevitable comeback for, of sports. So when they do come back, um, you know, everything will be up and ready to go and to provide that best experience. Um, I've got two things to ask. One is in terms of uh, uh, since the uh, wait time has got some uh, options in terms of uh, having your, uh, uh, say, digital marketing on your uh, device or things like that. So do you see more fan engagement happening through this now? Yeah, definitely. So because wait times uh, digital signage is, is very well seen inside these venues, um, it's a way to communicate messaging, whether it be finding the shortest line, um, informing people on social distancing, um, strategically messaging the fans because you have the attention of the fans um, on our system. So with that being said, a lot of big brand sponsors and advertisers, they want to get behind uh, products that provide relevant content that are seen by the fans. So not just um, flashing LED off in the corner. They want to get behind a system that has relevance to pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID. So, um, and we happen to fall into those categories. So we see digital activation increasing significantly. Awesome. Uh, so in, in, uh, in line with that, the second question that I have is that you spoke about uh, people, uh, well, first we start with the closed stadiums and then uh, going forward, we will be slowly opening up the stadiums and fans will come in and things like that. Uh, so, where, where does uh, wait time come in in terms of you can control the uh, number of people getting into the stadium uh, uh, or in addition to that, can you actually control the time also in which people get inside the stadium? Yeah, so it's all about, you know, of that, that data feed, right? So, we can provide all the data. We have different schematic designs that we've set up and different schemes that we've set up of our system. So, it'll say, here it is for... 30% capacity. Here it is for 50% capacity, 70%. So we know how to manage those crowds with with our data being used properly by the teams that we work with. So, um, so yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's those if then statements. If it hits a certain threshold, then do this. So yeah, we have all of that set up now, which is exciting. So it's just um, you know the next step is um, you know to put these in place before the season starts, which we actually have our first NFL property, which is exciting. Um, so um, with that being said, you know, there's a lot of different things we'll do once we're in. We just got to get in, which is um, happening now. Awesome. 
uh, i would like to uh, understand in terms of uh, nba because that's where you uh, you started off in terms of uh, becoming a major partner with lot of the nba the teams first and then you became one of the partners with uh, the national basketball association uh, yeah. so when do you see nba coming back uh, and uh, what are the restrictions in terms of you see in terms of uh, nba happening currently for the next uh, couple of months and with a uh, smaller season on july 31st so that's exciting so there is a date set um but it's going to be different you know there's going to be probably no fans inside the arena um besides for staff i i've read a lot of the protocols they have to do for all the players for all the you know the staff members um so and everything's going to be played at one controlled location which is obviously in orlando uh with disney so um It'll be interesting to see what happens. I know that you know this is temporary. This is not going to be forever. So, but we got to use COVID as a learning lesson of prioritization for technology initiatives. So, you know, when we saw it with us specifically, they're like, "Oh, you're a nice to have." Um, you, you know, it's not high on our priority list right now. We know how our crowds behave. um you know maybe sometime in the future but nowadays it's more about okay we have to know how our crowds are behaving um so every value proposition that we said early on is now rising to the top of the priority list as time goes on so it's it's pretty interesting to see how that lasts because we don't everything that's happening now is not is not permanent it's temporary in terms of the way that things are happening so these sports teams are really doing a, a a check on an audit on the technologies they have the systems they have in place and the programs that they put priority on you know they can't have foo foo technology anymore they have to have relevant arena technology that truly provides value and uh, if i understand correctly and if i remember correctly uh, you have a patent or you have applied for a patent for this right Yes, correct. Yep, we have software patents on our solution in multiple countries around the world and um you know both on the the software side, the whole entire system where your wait time information is put on like a mobile app or digital sign. Um so we've co- we've created a very big umbrella with our solution which has been um good and and you know position, positions us well. Great. so we spoke about uh, cricket uh, definitely australian cricket we spoke about that we spoke about nba you touched upon nfl uh, i think uh, you had a solution for the us uh, open right uh, so uh, is that uh, something which is getting tweaked and uh, they are going to use it in more effective a sense yeah so we got a um, we monitored the grandstand capacities of seating at the usta so that solution is being looked at by a number of different organizations around the world um including other tennis opens around around the world it's really where in golf so it's really where you have open general admission seating because you you know you can choose to go there if you if it's not general admission you're not allowed in there so uh but yeah we're looking at that that's a different use case of our what we call our massing algorithm but well, we use our matching algorithm in all stadiums as well so from a different application so it's interesting to see these different use cases of our technology um with the same technology so um but yeah there is a lot of interest with that solution around the world uh, we hope uh, and everyone is praying and hoping that uh, the covid thing uh, disappears fast uh, but right. uh, we never know what when it's going to happen or whether it's going to be a second wave or not we don't know about that Uh, and we have got uh, a big uh, event which was supposed to happen this year the olympics in japan uh, which uh, yep. has been rescheduled now and it's going to happen in 2021 if things go uh, as per plan uh, yep. so it it will be a event where in the uh, audience as well as the participants they would be coming from across the globe and uh, there will be huge requirement of crowd management there so is uh, wait time equipped to handle such a scale of uh, event and uh, crowd management yeah so actually we were working with the technology provider for the olympics this year and then everything got pushed off obviously so um 
So yeah, we are, we do have partnerships in place, systems integrators in place that can scale our solution around the world. So yes, we do have those in place now. Great. And uh, I'm sure that uh, going forward in 2022 Qatar uh, World Cup also, they would be requiring something similar to this and uh, Paytem can be a solution for that as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking to those people right now. So really it's the same problem with every event that you have. So, which is good. It doesn't matter what language you speak or what part of the world you're in. Crowds are always a problem. And so that's why having the pen, as you said, um, is very important for that. So that, that's the, really the best, the best way forward is to um, really tell the message clearly, um, which we have been doing. And then, you know, kind of building the use cases and expanding the use cases, especially from COVID, um, that kind of, uh, they increase the scope of what you can accomplish to provide a safer environment for crowds around the world. Uh, now, let me take you away from uh, sports and uh, another uh, uh, sector which has been badly impacted because of uh, the current situation is uh, tourism. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, say we take an example of Statue of Liberty. Uh, so there were restrictions in terms of the numbers, anyways, be, uh, before uh, COVID as well. But with now with the COVID, uh, do you see that uh, there will be more restrictions coming in tourism and uh, solutions like wait time can actually uh, give a confidence to the uh, tourists as well as the tourism boards to actually go ahead and uh, open up uh, places? Yeah, definitely. So we're actually talking to some uh, related organizations that are, are helping with that. Um, so there's a lot of different use cases around if you can manage your crowds properly and if you can manage the crowd intelligence properly, um, you know, you can have more throughput because you're managing crowds more. So, um, yeah, we're talking to a lot of different um, tourism boards right now, um, you know, a lot of airports as well, mass transit. So we're actually in a big train station in Australia as well um, called Southern Cross um, in Melbourne. I'm managing the people on the platform, the platforms. And so uh, monitoring how busy those platforms are is very important to the train station operations because they need to see exactly what's happening um, in terms of behavior. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of different things that we're doing and we're looking at. Um, it's hard to say what definitively that looks like, but there is value that we can provide nonetheless. I will touch upon another industry as well, and I think definitely the answer is going to be yes from your side for that as well, because your solution is such that uh, it can go and sit anywhere where uh, even two people start walking, that many time can actually capture those data. Uh, so the next industry that I wanted to touch upon is uh, the conference uh, and the hotels. That's another industry which has taken a big hit, because all the conferences have been uh, stopped. Now people are talking about virtual conferences. and. Uh, because of the tourism and the conferences getting a hit, uh, all the hotels are going through a bad patch. Uh, whether uh, wait time can actually uh, be a guiding uh, partner for them in terms of uh, how to go about things? Yeah, so we've talked to, through some of our bigger partners, we've talked to some um, hotel chains and um, monitoring the different areas around the hotel are very important to them, like the entryways the check-in lines, all that good stuff. So we'll be definitely going towards that. That's a little further away than right now. But um, at the end of the day, there is high interest there. We just got to, you know, we want to remain focused on what we're focused on, but we do have interest there nonetheless. So check-in lines, entry to the hotel, different areas around the hotel, um, the eating areas at the hotel, things of that sort, we're able to do that. Um, and that's what we're talking to them about right now. There are two very uh, important questions that I have to ask you. One, um, because you were uh, initially a partner for a big stadium like a Sydney Cricket Ground, and now yeah. we're talking about smaller outlets, groceries, coffee space, and things like that. So for a person who wants to actually utilize or use wait time, uh, is there a cost factor coming in in terms of uh, uh, whether uh, it's, it's going to be a pricey affair or uh, uh, things have been uh, scaled down and uh, uh, the price will not scale be down. Scaled Yeah, so scaled down. So we know that areas aren't going to be as large as a Sydney cricket ground or a Melbourne cricket ground. So we've made our solution super economical 
that um, addresses the needs of that size of organization. So we, we can obviously scale up and we can scale down effectively um, with the economies of scale. So we can actually, we put together a, a good program in place for all this stuff. And we've worked tirelessly and relentlessly on our, on our pricing um, to see what the best uh, option is. So yes, uh, the answer is yes. We can, we've scaled up and we've scaled down with our, with our um, the investment size. Great. Uh, another important uh, point that I had to uh, discuss, which we had discussed uh, even during our first uh, uh, call we had in October, is about the privacy. Uh, so uh, now with uh, uh, the crowd management coming in, a lot of uh, people who are talking about crowd management are talking about facial recognition as well. Uh, and if that happens, then people are worried about uh, their privacy and uh, whether uh, their data will get captured or something like that. So how does uh, uh, wait time work in terms of whether do you capture the uh, uh, personal data or the facial recognition happens or it's more on a uh, thermal scanning or something, something like that? Yeah, so it's all anonymous. So because we're from above and the crowds are down below, we only see the tops of their heads, their shoulders, the arms. So it's all anonymous. So it's not, hey, there's Bob and there's Sally underneath our cameras. It's there's an X and there's a Y. So it's all anonymous tracking, which allow us to, um, you know, very, very easily scale with our barriers of entry because it's just um, we don't capture any object recognition, any cellular recognition, uh, anything um, unique off the body, nothing. So it's all about being non-invasive with our solution, and the uh, uh, anonymity of our solution is, is very powerful. Awesome. Uh, I'm sure that uh, when you started pivoting and uh, started expanding to other uh, sectors and com coming out with new products, uh, there would have been definitely some uh, funding which would have been required. So uh, you had uh, the existing partners helping out with that or you had to actually go out and get some new funds? So we bootstrapped for the entire time, So, which is good. We are internally funded private company. Um, we didn't take any outside money. We usually tried to sh shy away from those conversations. Um, because we want to remain in control of what we're doing to re remain flexible and creative and entrepreneurial. So it's all internally funded. Awesome. Thank you, Zach, for uh, being part of the show. And I hope to see Wait Time uh, uh, moving across the globe and helping uh, people come out of this pandemic and start enjoying the life as it was uh, before pandemic. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh,